I think it's a crock of shit that these girls are crying just because my band, the Cincinnati Centers, had some shots or whatever. I thought it was commonplace. I thought that's what musicians did. You know, I think you're living something. Dude, you're not a musician. You're a poor man's Guy Fieri. What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video, and today we're going to watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's go check this out. So look at that sign. What do you think of that horse, chef? I mean, is it for kids or is it for adults? I'm, I'm kind of confused here. That's a strange image to project with a cartoon. So I'm not quite... <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. It's such a childish drawing. It doesn't look like it's meant to target adults. Jason heads into Wind Placer Show, a 5,000 square foot venue featuring an L-shaped bar. Low Why? That's not an L shape. That's like a J. Why is it shaped like that? It creates such a very, like you see that, look at that corner where the, the J curves. It's so tight. Like it's not comfortable for the bar patrons, nor is it comfortable for, you know, the guests sitting at that dining table. You have cocktails up there, I missed that. Oh, yes. <laughs> the wet <laughs> you tasted that one? I really like that one, actually. <laughs> what is this, like the 1980s? Like, you're gonna alienate a lot of guests with these offensively named cocktails. It's, it's crazy that people still do this. When I ordered the Long Island iced tea, I couldn't believe how much alcohol was in that thing. It's wasteful and it's costing them a lot of money. Something Lots of people think that Long Islands are supposed to be strong because you know, you pick up four bottles. Oh, it has to have a lot of alcohol in it. That's actually not true. The Long Island is basically a Collins. So with the Long Island, unlike a regular Collins, which only has a gin as the base, the, the Long Island has four uh, base liquors that are mixed together. But the total volume is still the same, which is about two ounces. So if you make a Long Island and you're instructing your bartenders to make it strong, you're losing money. That sounds good. So if I try the sample platter. Okay, I'll put it right in. No, he's not. In the microwave. Oh microwave. my god. Uh, what in the microwave? You have a deep fryer, which is one of the fastest ways of cooking food. And you're reheating food that was previously fried. I, I can't believe this. Why can't they just fry it from scratch? How much longer is that gonna take? There's nobody in there. I want to get an understanding of the history, guys. When did it open? In the winter of 2010. Um, so did you have a grand opening or anything like that? We didn't have official grand opening. You just sort of took no. over the old place? Right. That's not good because nobody's gonna know that things are gonna change. You know, if it wasn't doing well before, then yeah, you should make some kind of announcement or a name change or some kind of you know, gather some publicity. Otherwise, you're just getting get swept under the rug. A little disheartened. Aren't um, you a Navy boy? I am a Navy boy. I got my work ethic from the military, but I think maybe I don't have the confidence that I need to have. Yeah, you know, owning a bar is a completely different uh, discipline than anything else. Most of the time, you know, running a restaurant is it surprises a lot of people on how hard it is. Just because you're successful on uh, one thing or you're disciplined in one thing, it might not translate well when you're going into the bar and restaurant industry. What happened Saturday night? There's about 30 people here. Yeah. And a good amount of them walked out in a band. Your band. So the band is chasing them out. No, the band didn't chase them out. Rudy, and I'm gonna tell you, the band helped chase them out. Dude, when you have loud music, especially music that you don't want to hear, like I'd leave. Actually, we were working in a new drummer and it was basically a practice for us. So he's alienating customers to facilitate a rehearsal session for his band as you continue to fight and lose money. These bar guests, they're not your experimental guinea pigs to sit there and listen to your music to see how well they react to the songs. Like these bar patrons, you can't force them to be your audience. We'll go to work, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you come out to a Cincinnati Center show and we'll kick your ass and rock and roll. Dude, he's not, John Taffer's not here to listen to rock music. He's here to rescue a bar. The music has nothing to do with this. When did you guys cut these limes? Saturday. Uh, it is Monday night, right? Limes at most last 10 hours. They don't key for several days. Why didn't you cut amount of fruit for the day? Haven't. How many times have you thrown fruit away? Every day. Every day she throws fruit away. Dude, considering how slow it is, they don't have to cut that much. Heck, they could even probably cut to order if it's that slow. So here's the deal. I want you guys to clean this place tonight. We're running our asses off from one end of the bar to the other, cleaning everything. Tracy should be helping us She's very frustrating. It's past my bedtime. It's like... <laughs> it's like... 
You're working at a bar. It's past everyone's bedtime. What is this? Bunch of good, as you can see. Do you see this dripping though? What is this? This kitchen is disgusting. It seems like every episode of Bar Rescue so far, nobody cleans the fryers. This can't be happening. Do people not realize that they can set this whole place on fire? Like, it's not that, it doesn't take that long to clean this stuff. Caked with grease, the grill is caked with grease. I even have grease dripping from the pipes. This kitchen can't operate this way. This ain't cool. It's the old building. Cleaning an old building has nothing to do with it, bro. Dude, the old building, it doesn't matter. You've had this for years. If anyone pitches in, this can be cleaned in a few hours. Rudy, how's this working for you? It's not working, but I know my cooks and they work their Asses no, off. he doesn't. Wait. They just don't come back here and stand. Well, they obviously aren't working because they're not cooking enough food to stay busy all day, are they, Barry? Hold it. They're also using the microwave to reheat food that they cooked earlier. So how could they not have a lot of extra free time, especially when the bar is so friggin' empty? Clear to me that Rudy spends a lot more time with his van than he does here, because his views of his kitchen staff are way off. That was probably the first time he's been in the kitchen in months, if not years. Yeah, he doesn't seem to give a crap about this bar with the exception of the fact that it's a venue for him to play at. First of all, so that everybody knows where we're at, this business is how far away from closing? Less than 30 days. Whoa, 30 days? How? There's no way you can rescue something in 30 days. Like it's pretty, like I'm sorry, I'm just, I mean, I'm not trying to be pessimistic. That's just in the way, that's not enough time. Let me show you the real numbers. Who worked Saturday night? Good job, guys. You gave away $600 worth of liquor. It's like every single episode, they're giving away hundreds of dollars of booze on slow shifts. And like, we've seen this before, like they're not giving them away by mistakes, you know, like a quarter or half an ounce here and there. Like there has to be something shady going on which unfortunately might be including theft. Somebody went here and took a product and didn't go there and ring it. You guys disagree? I disagree. Why? Have you ever pulled beers and not rung them up for a good customer? I have. Oh! I probably give away more than any of them. You've given away more than any of them? I, yeah. So the owner is at fault here. So not only is he scaring customers away because of his you know, crappy music. He's also giving away product to his friends. On Saturday night, it was Rudy's band playing here and we're told to get a shot and take it up there and don't worry about it. That's not completely 100% true. I don't know, man. You could hear it in her voice that he forced them to do something that they didn't want to do. Here's your double shot, Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. That's my uh, nectar of the gods before the show. I'm very disappointed. And they have it on camera. He knew he was being filmed. He just not remember because he was too drunk. I think it's a crock of that these girls are crying just because my band, the Cincinnati Centers, had some shots or whatever. I thought it was commonplace. I thought that's what musicians did. You know, I think you live in some- Dude, you're not a musician. You're a poor man's Guy Fieri. I don't think that my husband is a kiss of death. Rudy has his good days and his bad days, but he has a good time coming to work. What's up? Who cares about his good time? It's all about the guests. Are they having a good time? Why are you crying? Maybe now you're seeing the people that do care. Rudy and Tracy don't care. Look around you. You can see it right here in front of your face. Who gives a about this bar? Dude, she's absolutely right. You can tell who cares about this bar because the workers who are crying, all these are the ones who care. This owner and his wife don't have any remorse. They don't feel bad that this place is gonna close down in 30 days. Put the drink on the bar and build it on the bar. I don't think- Yeah, what is she doing? Why is she building it while holding it in freaking in the air? Like, you gotta build all your drinks on the rail. Tracy is almost single-handedly killing us behind the bar. Right, Tracy, right. I'm gonna pull you. You can't do this, hon. You're sinking. I'm gonna switch you with Courtney. I want you to go on a floor, pick up her station. I'm gonna take our food over. Uh, Tracy is back there. I'll send her right over, I promise. Which food? I need a food. So she not only is doing a horrible job as a bartender, she doesn't even know how to take orders. They're actually going up to the bar to take food orders. I ordered a beer and they brought me a water. Oh! Okay. How, how does that happen? Like, beer and water. Tracy's tables aren't getting their drinks in time. And therefore, 
for it. They're coming up to the bar and ordering drinks from us. We're making them and then coming to find out that they're already made sitting over in the server station. Oh my god. I've heard of drinks being, you know, double rung, as in they get rung twice. So you make, you know, by accident, twice as many drinks. But this is when you have drinks that are ready to go, that are being made again, because the drinks are not landing on the tables. They're not being run. We had a table of 15 people walk out because of Tracy's lousy service. I don't care who she's married to. Either she's gonna shape up or she's gonna ship out. Dude, like, I don't understand how, why she wanted to do this. I don't know if that's kind of cool to be, you know, the wife of the musician that's performing on stage, that's scaring away the customers out on a Saturday night. Like this whole setup is all, there's no, it's setting this place up for failure. We never got a drink in 40 minutes. Yeah, no drinks, dehydrate. Dehydrate. So I'm not in a good mood. Tables aren't served. Dude, it's, how do you not get beer to the table? That's the fastest way to make tips. Tracy, the fact of the matter is you are a lousy bartender. You're not a good server. Am I wrong? I don't have anything to say. Barry, do you think she can do it? I don't think she can handle this volume. Dude, she has no qualifications. She's only here because she's the wife of one of the owners. And this is, and it's the owner that's running this place to the ground. And nobody likes working with her. I've seen these girls work. They're not superstars either. But point the finger at somebody else, you get the fingers point off you. Dude. People are pointing the fingers at you too, and it's not one or two people. Basically, the whole team is pointing fingers at both you and your wife. Rudy, do you want to be here? I want to rock and roll. If Rudy doesn't- That doesn't answer the question. Being here is not partying and pretending to be a rock star with guinea pigs who are forced to be your audience. Being here is being an owner running the place. After a rough stress test, the staff returns the next morning to find that John has already begun the transformation. Well, that's different. They usually wait until the end for the reveal. So I wonder what this is about. Somebody is missing, obviously. Where's Tracy? Is she coming today? Uh, I don't believe so. Then I guess by Tracy's choice, she's no longer with us. I don't blame my wife for not showing back up. Uh, she has a right to be pissed off because, you know, why would she want to be around somebody, that, you know, that throws her under the bus? That's just bull Dude, nobody threw her under a bus. The customers left. That speaks for itself. And it was pretty clear that nobody likes her. She has no experience. Like, she only got the job because she's the, one of the owner's wife. That's it. That's literally the only reason. 50,000 cars are going to see that. By placing the top secret sign on top of Win Place or Show, I'm creating curiosity. That's very, very smart. A lot of these guys driving this road, they're going to work. You know, they probably pass that place all the time without even uh, considering what that place was. You're creating word of mouth rumors, speculation. So yeah, this is very, very smart. After watching last night, what I wanted to talk about today is you've said to me on two or three occasions, your love is your music. Yeah, exactly. So how do we do that for you? How do we get you the hell out of here? Yeah, if your love is music, why are you trying to run a bar? Just because you want an audience? Like, why not just play at a small show? Don't drag your friend down because you need an audience. Right, you can go back and do what you enjoy right. doing and you can have somebody in here who's really gonna be into your business, not into something else. Who do we go to to do it? Amber has expressed uh, sincere desire and... Great, let's get Amber in here. Amber really cares about it. Yeah, earlier she said that she's gonna, she really cares about this place and you know, she moved here for this bar and that she would definitely buy this place out if given a chance. So now that they're going to propose it to her, let's see what happens. We've decided to uh, let Rudy focus on his music and I'd like to welcome Amber as uh, your new owner in my part. Rudy's gone, Amber's in and I couldn't be happier. Amber's gonna be a great co-owner. What do you think, Amber? Yeah, this is a win-win situation. You can tell, like, the whole crew really knows, like, she's a legitimate person and that she really cares about this place. Today, I feel free because now I don't have to worry about the bar business and it failing. They're gonna put something in new for Barry and them, so I'm happy for them. This must be one of the best negotiations I've seen on Bar Rescue. Usually, uh, you know, I, I forgot who said. I think it was a. Uh, I think it was Larry David that said a good compromise is when all parties leave dissatisfied. But this looks like everyone is actually happy with uh, this uh, negotiation. How about if tonight you open up the doors, introduce your new place, and have the live rock and roll provided 
by Hailstorm from Atlantic Records. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be that fabulous. Would be, don't make me new. cry on radio, okay? <laughs> when I got here, Dude, that's great. Like, these people are so nice. It doesn't seem like there was anyone at fault except you have a owner with a big ego that's kind of ruining it all. Are you ready to sit? Yes. yes. Sir. Okay. Oh! Are you serious? Wow. <laughs> Man, that looks so good. Like, it's such a huge improvement. Check out this folding bar. This is some friends of mine at Smart Bar Products. By having a draft beer and shot station here, I'm taking pressure off the bar. Next! Yeah, he's done this on another episode, and I'm big, I'm a big fan. Like, I used to work in venues, and uh, we had satellite stations where we had draft beer. Uh, uh, and guess what? A lot of people who want to watch concerts, uh, you know, such as this where they have live music, they don't want to drink hard liquor or cocktails. They just want something to hold to drink while they're, you know, get in and out to back at the show as soon as possible. That's crazy. You went from a local rock star wannabe and you have now like a legitimate rock band playing at your venue. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.